This is News Today with WDW News Today. I'm Tom Corliss of WDWNT.com. Please like this video, subscribe, and hit the notifications bell to make sure you never miss the latest from the Disney theme parks all around the world. But here now the news for May 22nd, 2023. Disney Parks Chairman Josh Tomorrow spoke uh, about the domestic U.S. parks and many other topics at the J.P. Morgan Global Technology, Media, and Communications Conference uh, this week. He specifically spoke about Disneyland in Anaheim and the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World and their ability to expand capacity. Tomorrow stated that the park's management teams and Imagineers were always hard at work to not only improve the guest experience at the resorts, but to include additional capacity in several ways. Josh explained that one of the primary ways they increase capacity is by adding attractions. And recently, Tron Light Cycle Run was added outside the berm or border boundary at the Magic Kingdom, increasing the park's actual space and adding capacity with an additional ride. Adding a ride or show to a theme park increases capacity because many visitors spend time waiting in line or experience the attraction itself, which in turn allows, allows more people to navigate the park comfortably. Uh, in Disneyland, you may know that Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway was added in January. Uh, it was a similar thing where it was outside the park's boundaries, um, but you enter through what was in the park's boundaries previously. Uh, there's also Star Wars Galaxy's Edge. A lot of that land was not in the park before either. Tomorrow then stated that Disney believes there is plenty of opportunity within the park's footprints to increase capacity inside current bounds by ways of additional attractions or reimagining spaces. In addition, they have space both in and beyond the park berms, claiming they can utilize this space outside the current boundaries, quote, quote unquote, pretty aggressively at both Magic Kingdom and at Disneyland. Uh, Disney parks have done this before, like I just mentioned, Galaxy's Edge and Runaway Railway. Um, a great example that is very, very similar um, to what they've, they've teased for Magic Kingdom, that Beyond Big Thunder thing. Hong Kong Disneyland in the uh, early 2010s when they added Toy Story Land and uh, Grizzly Gulch and Mystic Point. Um, all of those are three lands that are connected to each other. They're all adjacent, and they're all just beyond uh, the train berm, uh, which is very similar to what we saw in the art um, for the proposed Coco uh, and Encanto and Villains areas at Magic Kingdom, very similar. So um, they keep teasing this, and if you keep teasing it enough, it means obviously it's still in the works and it's still planned, and um, those plans are beyond Big Thunder might, might just become a reality. Josh Tomorrow also discussed the $17 billion investment in Florida that's planned for over the next decade. He stated that it did include the already ongoing transformation of Epcot, the new Star Tours changes, which are coming in the near future, and as well, Tiana's Bayou Adventure, the reimagining of Splash Mountain at the Magic Kingdom. In addition, he claimed new capacity and intellectual properties would be added to the Florida parks as part of this investment. Tomorrow explained that with intellectual properties such as Marvel and Star Wars continually adding new content, Imagineers and executives are able to bring these to life in the parks just as easily and with as much excitement as their older content. He used Runaway Railway as an example of using very old content property to spark guest delight, stating that all of the properties in their portfolio are incredibly powerful. He intends to continue utilizing a range of these properties in parks moving forward. Um, to stop and talk about this for a second, yeah, Mickey is an older property, and we won't get into the whole thing that there was another Mickey ride originally intended to replace the great movie ride. It was called the Great Mickey Ride, and it wasn't solely based on the newer Mickey Mouse shorts. So, yeah, Mickey, of course, is not uh, Disney's oldest IP, in fact, if you don't count Oswald, which they had to buy back later. Um, but they also used the current shorts. So, um, But I, I think... Obviously, we just talked about the Villains Land. A lot of those villains are older properties, Maleficent, uh, Chernabog. Those are, those are much older IPs, which I think, um, I think more fans would be happy if everything is not just based on current stuff. Like, if you can expand Magic Kingdom and you have Coco and Encanto living alongside, uh, you know, uh, pieces from Sleeping Beauty and Fantasia and things like that, you offer a little something for everybody, right? I mean, there are so many older properties that I think they have still not utilized really well that people love, right? Jungle Book comes to mind, Lion King comes to mind. Um, there, there are a lot of movies that have worldwide appeal and are known by everyone um, that still have not been utilized. And if we, you know, personally, I, I know like you, I wanna see original attractions again someday. But at the same time, you know, I, I, I love the Disney IPs. I love the cartoons and the, the animated features and those things as much as the next Disney fan. And there's plenty of them I would like to see, if not, you know, personally, I don't care about Encanto, but, you know, 
um, all these other ones I, I certainly do care about. And I think it'd be great if with all this stuff coming up, it's not just Moana and Zootopia and Encanto, but also Jungle Book and Lion King and Fantasia and Sleeping Beauty and all these, you know, these movies that have staying power. They've proved that they're never going anywhere. They're always going to be in the public conscious. Um, give them representation and in a big way. And I, I, you know, I agree with that. So here's hoping that that happens and we don't just stick to the usual status quo, which is like, oh, this movie's been popular the last five years. Let's just stick with those kind of things. When prompted at the conference specifically about building additional parks in different regions of the United States, similar to what Universal recently announced, Disney Parks chairman Josh Tomorrow stated Disney currently does not have any interest in that type of expansion. In response to commentary on Universal's Texas Park and their Las Vegas year-round Horror Nights attraction announcements, tomorrow said, quote, it must be interesting for them. For us, we think that focusing on our core assets is where we should be spending most of our opportunity. As I said earlier, we think that there's so much potential there. Uh, that's where we'll continue to focus our efforts. Tomorrow's statement confirms that Disney does not plan to open an additional park in a new region, instead focusing those resources on Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resort. Universal announced their Texas Park will be opening in the coming years as a family-friendly addition to their portfolio. Um, I see your comments. I read the comments on this show, on Universal Parks News today. I read those comments. And I'm often flabbergasted by the number of comments that, are, that talk about how Universal um, is pulling away by building a third park in Florida and by building these regional things. Now, don't get me wrong. I think the Horror Nights attraction in Vegas is brilliant and will print money and is probably more of what they should be doing. A sort of spin-off park that focuses just on DreamWorks kids' properties in Texas, I do think dilutes the brand a bit, right? And I think it will convince people, and you may not think this, but it's gonna convince people that they don't need to travel to Hollywood or Orlando. You know, obviously there are things that can convince them, right? Whether they want to see Super Nintendo World um, or, or some other properties that are an Epic Universe, Harry Potter stuff. Um, but it, it dilutes it a bit, right? I think, you know, and, and Disney would do the same. And I think they understand that. And they understand already, like when Animal Kingdom, the thing you have to remember, when Animal Kingdom opened in 1998, um, it did not add more tourists to Walt Disney World. That, that's what they thought would happen. It's a thing that happened sometimes with the other parks they added. Um, but what it instead did was pulled attendance away from their other existing parks. So we're talking about a time in history when, you know, personally, I think those, those other parks, MGM at the time and Epcot Center, drew particularly well at that time. They weren't in the state they had been, um, you know, before their most recent expansions, they were still drawing really well. So for people to decide like, oh, well, this trip, we, we got to cut a day somewhere so we can go to Animal Kingdom. Maybe we just won't go to Epcot or MGM. Um, and I think there's a decent chance that's what happens with Epic Universe, right? I think we, we maybe have hit a, a ceiling here in Florida as far as like the, the amount of time people are willing to come here on a vacation. And, and people, people only have a certain amount of time off and a certain amount of funds. And when they run out of both of those, it doesn't really matter. They're, they're going to sacrifice somewhere. So they might still come. Um, but but one, one of the parks in the area is going to be sacrificed from their itinerary. It's inevitable um, when, when you have this much to do. And I don't think Universal is necessarily going to see the results they want there. I think Epic Universe will, will be a big hit for, for the IP that's in it. But I, I think it could have a, a, an interesting effect on the, all of the existing parks, including Universal's two parks. So we'll see if I'm right or wrong in a couple years. But just based on what we've seen previously, um, you don't want to dilute it. And, and just because you build more doesn't mean your attendance will go up. Just because you add another gate doesn't mean... Um, that you're going to have attendance that's, you're not immediately going to add the full capacity of that park daily as an added attendance to what you already draw, if that makes sense. Disney World's closure of the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser in September will enable them to claim a write-off of approximately $300 million. That's what Josh Morrow said uh, during that conference today. He indicated that the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser did not perform as well as Disney had hoped, uh, but will ultimately lead to a significant tax break for the company. Following the hotel's closure, depreciation is expected to accelerate at a rate of 100 to 150 million per quarter over a span of two quarters. DeMarro also spoke on the excellent guest experience found on the Star Cruiser. However, since the Halcyon did not bring in enough guests, the immersive experience will be closing this fall.
Though on the surface, this depreciation may sound negative. The company is pleased with the value reduction because of the taxation. According to the IRS, depreciation is an annual income tax deduction that will allow you to recover the cost or other basis of certain property over the time you use the property in an allowance. Uh, it is an allowance for wear and tear, uh, deterioration or obsolescence of the property. It's a mouthful. And by reducing the value of the Galactic Star Cruiser Hotel, Disney will be required to pay less tax on the property overall. This does seem to indicate that they will not be converting it into something else because you, I don't, correct me if I'm wrong, not my area of expertise. I don't think you can write that off and then reuse it because I think if you reuse it, then you owe some of that tax money back, right? Um, don't quote me on that, but, um, so it's not a great sign for the future of Star Cruiser. Um, as anything else, but an interesting note that Disney's happy about their tax deduction as they, um, you know, destroy this thing that so many great creative people and cast members work to build. But anyway, speaking of the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, all reservations for that final voyage uh, leaving on September 20, leaving on September 28th, uh, those are that that is now completely booked. It is gone, according to the Walt Disney World website. You may remember that with the surprise announcement, they stated that any voyages beyond that date would be able to rebook with a 50% discount. Well, it seems a lot of those people that were booked for November and December decided it would be really cool to go on that farewell voyage. I can't blame them. And uh, they will be doing that. So according to Disney, as of now, there are no rooms left on that final voyage again on May 26th, they will reopen bookings to everyone with no discounts available at that time. I, of course, I'm very sad. I really wanted to be on that last voyage, but uh, wasn't meant to be. Continuing on with the Halcyon, uh, sources close to the project have indicated to WDWNT.com that the immersive experience was scheduled to close temporarily a few weeks later uh, than September 30th anyway. Prior to the last week's announcement, the Galactic Star Cruiser was internally expected to halt the sales of reservations dated after December 2023. And based on recent internal reports, this may have been to facilitate a series of updates and changes across the entire experience. Rumors have been swirling for quite some time that the Star Cruiser would face a transformation, either to feature a different set of storylines and characters or to become a more traditional themed hotel. It was assumed that an announcement would be made regarding the closure that included information about the Star Cruiser's future. However, uh, the statements made by Disney last week seem to confirm it will not return as the two-night immersive experience it was before, no matter what it eventually does return as. If it does, thank today's announcement about the tax uh, refund doesn't really, uh, or the tax break doesn't really indicate that it will come back at all. Imagineers, though, were reportedly on the Halcyon as recently as last week, working on a revamped Gaia dinner show, as well as going over new merchandise that was on the way and new spiels for the bartenders at the Sublight Lounge. Obviously, this is not the kind of investment of time and money you would make uh, if you plan to close something permanently. So per sources, all of the cast of the Star Cruiser and these creatives were surprised by the announcement, having received no warning that this was a possibility. Uh, the question now is, um, what's going to happen? Does, is it going to sit? Is it just going to sit there? Is it going to be one of those things like the people mover track at Disneyland that we just stare at for all of eternity? I mean, I would assume over a certain amount of time after Disney gets all their tax breaks, maybe then they can reuse the space for something. I don't I don't know, but um, it may be one of those things we just like the NBA experience where we just stare at it for a long time. And no, I'm not comparing Galactic Star Cruiser to the NBA experience. Like one of those things was a gross... <laughs> A gross miscalculation of what people wanted, which is NBA experience, as opposed to something that was innovative and different and tried to reinvent, and I think successfully, many aspects of the themed entertainment industry. And I will say this again. Like, here's the thing. Of course, in the end, this is, this is what it's been in the Walt Disney Company for a long time, where in the end, the executives and the corporation itself are not the ones to suffer, right? They're going to get this big tax break. It's no... You know, uh, it's no skin off their teeth, right? So, yeah. I mean, in the end, it's, it's the creatives that worked for years on this project. It's the cast members that now have to go work somewhere that they really don't want to work after putting their heart and soul into this thing. And the guests are, are the ones that are going to suffer for this experience being, being uh, you know, mismanaged and mispriced and misadvertised in a lot of ways.
but but that's that's the way this stuff always goes. That's why you get to be a bitter 30-something-year-old Disney fan like I am, because you relive this experience over and over and over again. This program is, this very bitter program is brought to you by our official travel agent sponsor, Be Our Guest Vacations. Your dream vacation begins with Be Our Guests and their concierge team of expert vacation planners. Head on over to BeOurGuestVacations.com slash WDWNT and their team will design your next magical vacation from the Walt Disney World and Disneyland Resorts to the Disney Cruise Line to Adventures by Disney and more. They're also able to book unforgettable VIP tours where you and your group can experience the ultimate Park Day. And the best part is their services are 100% free, so book today. The Magic Carpets of Aladdin attraction Adventureland at the Magic Kingdom is uh, currently down, and there's no reasoning as to why, but it's been down a lot as of late. It was closed again today after being closed several days in the past month, some, uh, several consecutive days at this point as well. Uh, again, it's unclear what's happening, what the problems are. There is no scheduled closure for this ride. Um, but it's not doing well. And it's not a, a complicated enough ride for this to be a problem, maybe. But um, maybe it points again at the, the maintenance problems of Walt Disney World. Um, there is a very famous, um, I'm, I know I'm going into a lot of tangents today. But for the sake of time, I do like this story. Um, famously, Disneyland's Dumbo um, completely fell apart at one point, which necessitated them to reroute the new Dumbo that they had designed for Disneyland Paris, Euro Disneyland. That actually ended up being the one that went to Disneyland in Anaheim, and then the one they were building for Anaheim went to Paris instead, a second one. So um, there is a historical, uh, there is some historical context to this where these, uh, one of these Disney spinner rides has permanently broken at one point in the past. So it's it's not... Despite not being a super complicated ride system, it happens. And maybe, um, you know, be interesting to see what happens with Magic Carpets of Aladdin. I know I have no love lost for this thing. And so if it went away, I would not be heartbroken. But let us know in the comments how you feel. The entrance of Mission Space in Epcot is showing excessive signs of wear. Speaking of Walt Disney World maintenance, various portions of the shiny crimson orb that represents Mars are showing heavy wear and tear, and the maroon glow characteristic of the display is giving way to bare grayness and warped material underneath. Dirt is also accumulated over uh, all in the grooves of the sculpture. The structure hides, of course, the entrance for both the orange and green team missions of Mission Space, and uh, both the guests and cast members are regularly stationed underneath. But um, it's been a couple of years since they refurbished the exterior. It looks like it's time to do that again. But while we're over in the Mission Space area, let's talk about the new and exciting bites and beverages for adventurous astronauts abound at Space 220 Lounge in Epcot. Uh, we took a trip to the stars to try out an entirely new cocktail menu. That's nine new drinks. And as well, there was a new shrimp cocktail, a $24 shrimp cocktail. Uh, and uh, we have a review on the site where we'll, we'll tell you if that's worth it. But also one drink I want to feature and why you should go read the review. There's some very cool stuff on the cocktail menu. One of those things is the Black Hole Fashioned. Uh, it's Knob Creek Bourbon, uh, Demerara, Whiskey Barrel Aged Bitters, and it is, uh, they do this really cool smoked thing on it. It's uh, the Flavor flavor Blast or whatever they call it. Um, it's very, very cool. Go check out the review, and actually, you can watch the review on, it'll be on the uh, season finale of WDWAF, that's Walt Disney World After Five, uh, which will happen this Thursday at 9 p.m. on our WWNT TV channel. See Eric, Jake, and I. Uh, try all these all nine cocktails out. We tried nine nine cocktails in one sitting. How do you think it went? Find out on the show this week. Again, read the review if you'd like at WDWNT.com. Figment, the star of the Journey into Imagination attraction at Epcot, will appear in a little golden book for the first time. This new publication will become available in January of next year, 2024, and features the One Little Spark lyrics uh, penned by the Sherman Brothers. Both digital, Kindle, and physical hardcover copies are currently available for pre-order and priced at $5.99. The cover art has not been released yet. And while this may be the first for Figment, there have been a lot of Disney attraction little golden books the last few years. They're all very cool. Jungle Cruise, Haunted Mansion, Space Mountain, Orange Bird, Small World. I highly recommend all of them. They're very, very cute. Um, I love them. And I'm very excited that Figment is getting one. Looking forward to this very much. 
An entire new selection of apparel, kitchenware, glassware, linens, decorations, and accessories is available at the Volkskunst in the Germany Pavilion at Epcot. This predominantly comprises items themed to Minnie Mouse and the uh, Edelweiss, a rare mountain flower celebrated across the Alps in Europe. It's a really cool new line. Check out uh, all the items in the line at www.nt.com. One of the most notable features of the Toy Story-themed Roundup Rodeo Barbecue at Hollywood Studios was the comically giant pencil that was given to guests to sign their, their checks at the end of their meals, or at least it was until the restaurant decided recently to retire them as guests kept stealing the giant pencils. From its opening in late March to about a week ago, guests dining at the Roundup Rodeo Barbecue were able to sign their checks with the comically giant pencil, which had a normal-sized pen uh, embedded in the front of it. The giant pen helped to emphasize the feeling of guests being shrunk down to the size of a toy. It was one of the more charming elements, I will say. It was one of my favorite moments of our um, initial visit to the restaurant. But some guests dining at the barbecue decided they should take it home. And so they did, and because of that, they've decided to not uh, give out the pencils anymore. Why are, number one, how are people sneaking these out? Are they throwing them in a backpack? I, there, is, there is a comical thought to someone like opening like a trench coat and putting a giant pencil in it. I do enjoy thinking of that, but that's, the truth is that's not what happened. And of course, uh, another situation like the Sporks at, at Docking Bay 7 in, in Galaxy's Edge where um, a couple of guests have ruined this now for everyone. Uh, when we talked to servers, they were unsure if the pencils will return, but odds are they, they probably will not. A sneak preview of the upcoming live action remake of The Little Mermaid is now playing at Walt Disney Presents at Hollywood Studios. In addition to the brief screening, props from the film are on display around the lobby and an aerial meet and greet will be opening at the location on May 26th to coincide with the official wide release. The neon lit marquee out front prominently displays this limited time showing as numerous posters adorn various surrounding walls, lamp posts, and automatic doors. The props featured inside are original and include an engagement ring, a spyglass, a jade mermaid, Triton's conch shell, and a statue from Ariel's Grotto. Toshio Kagami, age 87, is retiring as chief executive officer of the Oriental Land Company, which operates the Tokyo Disney Resort. Uh, Yumiko Takano will be replacing Kagami as CEO. The change was announced during the Friday OLC Board of Directors meeting and will be officially approved after the sixth ordinary general meeting of shareholders on June 29th. Kagami will stay on in his position as chairman of the Board of Supervisors. Takano is the current executive vice president and will uh, be the OLC's first female chairman and CEO. Kagami was a driving force behind Tokyo Disney Resort, having been appointed the director of the OLC's real estate division back in 1976, six years before Tokyo Disneyland opened. By 1983, he was the managing director, and in 1993, he was named executive vice president. In 1995, he became the representative director and president, and two decades later, in 2005, he officially became chairman and CEO. In addition to representative director, Kagami was inducted as a Disney legend in 2008. Quote, Walt was definitely a wonderful person, said Kagami in a D23 interview, but the fact that we were able to bring the Disney Resort to Japan and make it a success in Japan, I believe that we were able to bridge these two different cultures together. The world has to be a, peaf a peaceful place, and I would like to see more and more of these bridges built across the world. Of course, um, a, a, an individual with a tremendous impact on the Disney universe as we know it, right? I mean, Tokyo Disney Resort. Uh, an incredible place that keeps Walt's vision alive uh, and does so for a culture that, that really appreciates um, these parks and resorts. It's, it's a beautiful thing, and he was, uh, Kagami, such a huge part of that. So we wish him well uh, in the rest. I mean, I, I would say some semi-retirement, he's still going to be on a board. Um, but obviously he got a big standing ovation at the last D23 Expo, and rightfully so, uh, a tremendous, tremendous executive. For the absolute latest on these stories and all that didn't make it into today's show, be sure to check WDWNT.com and follow us on all your favorite social media platforms. You can support the entire team behind this show and others by joining the WDWNT Interglobe Society at Patreon.com slash WDWNT. Get access to exclusive content, discounted show and event tickets, including uh, right now only our WIGS members can register for our, un our unscrupulous 16th birthday event, which is coming up in July. All that info is uh, on our Patreon page. And as well, a special shout out to all of our WIGS members watching who make the show happen every week. For the worldwide leader in Disney Parks news, this is Tom Corliss saying, enjoy the rest of your today and have a great big beautiful tomorrow. 
This is Disney Entertainment News Today. I'm Rob Whiteside, and here now are the top Disney Entertainment stories. For the latest in Disney Entertainment News, watch Disney Entertainment News Today, hosted by Rob Whiteside. From movies and series news to stage shows, books, video games, and more, new episodes drop every Tuesday on WWNT.TV.